Welcome back to the channel and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to make a 3D tennis ball in Blender 4.2. This is a fantastic beginner's tutorial. It's really simple and basic with the modeling and it touches on things like particle systems to get this nice fuzziness here and then we just got two simple materials. It honestly couldn't be a simpler beginner's tutorial and I'll quickly show you um, obviously this is the final render result you're looking at here but here is the 3D model. And we're just gonna be doing some really basic um, modeling techniques on a UV sphere to get this kind of band that wraps around the tennis ball. So you can see here, this is the topology of the tennis ball. So yeah, if you wanna learn how to do this, let's jump into Blender 4.2 and make a tennis ball that you can be proud of. So if a new scene in Blender, select all of the default objects and press delete. And then we're gonna press Shift A. We're gonna to go to our add options under the mesh dropdown. We're gonna go ahead and add in a UV sphere. And then we're gonna press tab to go into edit mode. And in our front or graphic view, let's go ahead and enable our X-ray up here. And in our very front view here, we're just gonna click and drag and just select exactly half of the sphere. If you go to your top view, you need to make sure everything here is also selected perfectly in half. And then you're gonna press P and you're gonna go um, selection, so separate selection. Let's go back into object mode and now select this sphere and then go RX90 and hit enter. So now it's rotated at 90 degrees on the X. And if we actually press Z and go to wireframe, you can see this is what we've done, RX90. And it's now offset by 90 degrees, this half. And if that's still selected, we're gonna hold and shift and select the other half and go control J to join them together. And then we're gonna to go to our modifiers, add modifier, we're gonna go weld, get a weld modifier. And we're gonna make this 0.02 to make sure all of these can fuse together. And for now, I'm just gonna go back into solid view, toggle off my X-ray. And now I'm gonna come here to the dropdown and apply that. And now if we go into edit mode and we select a face on this side and go control plus, it should go all the way around because it's all joined as one mesh. Okay, so now we have the basis for our tennis ball and the topology here is gonna work really good. So we're gonna go to our edge select option and we're gonna come over here. And you can see here, if you go to your front view, we've got all of these edges running up like so, right? And we're gonna go with the one right up here. So it's kind of in the middle from here and in the middle from here. So just this one running here. We're gonna go Shift, Alt, and left click, and it'll select it all the way around like so, as you can see, right? And you can already see how this is gonna be a tennis ball. So we're gonna go Control B to bevel. So Control B to bevel. We're gonna bevel about this much, and then left click. And then we're gonna go E to extrude and right click and then go Alt S and scale that selection in a little bit like so. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to our edge select option in which it is enabled and deselect everything. And then if you hover over the middle here and you go Control R, you're gonna see a loop forming all the way around. And if it's in the middle of this trench, you're gonna double click to add it in. And then you're gonna go Alt S and scale it out slightly along the normals, and then you can go Control B to create a bevel, like so. And then what we wanna do is go Shift Alt and left click on this edge here and this edge here. So we've got the two sharp edges here on the ends of the groove selected. And then go Control B and just give it a slight bevel and then left click. Now we just need to go to our face select option, deselect everything, then go Shift Alt and just left click in the middle of two faces with Shift and Alt enabled. And now you can see it's gonna do a loop selection all the way around like so. And we're gonna go Control Plus to grow to selection. And let's go over here to our object data properties and let's go to our vertex group and click plus. We've created a new group, let's just call it um, no hair. And let's just go ahead and assign that. So we know later on that we don't want hair to be over here. Then we're gonna go Control I or Command I to inverse the selection. And then let's go to our materials here. And for now, let's just create a new material. Let's call it Seam. And then let's click on plus and create another material and go new and let's call it Tennis Ball. And let's go ahead with this Tennis Ball selected and all of the selection active. Let's go ahead and assign that and now let's go down on the tennis ball material all the way to the viewport display and make the color here tennis ball green. And this is just so we can see it's been applied in the right place. So now later on, we'll have a tennis ball and our seam as two separate materials. Now let's go back into object mode and with this um, tennis ball here selected, 
right click and go shade smooth and then go over to your uh, modifiers add modifier and click search and type in sub and get a subdivision surface and make sure to set the render to one so both the viewport and the render are at a level of one so now we have our tennis ball model so let's go over to our particles let's go plus and let's make it hair Let's come here and click on advanced and then under the hair length, let's take that way down. So something really short. So I'm gonna make it like 0 0.035. And then we're gonna go over to our children. We're gonna make it interpolated. And let's go to the viewport display, make the strand steps free. And under our render, we're gonna make it beast spline. And then to make this look more like a tennis ball, let's go down to our um, roughness here. Let's go to the random and give it a bit of random. Let's go to the endpoint, give it a little bit of endpoint. And then under the un, um, uniform here, we're just gonna give it a slight value and then under the size as well, just give that a value. And under the random size here, let's make that, give that a slight value and there we go. So now it looks more frizzy, but it's still adding particles everywhere. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go down to our vertex groups we're gonna to go to density and select no hair. And now it's adding the hair exactly where we don't want it, but we're just gonna go here and click on this inverse button. And now it's got everything in the right place. So now in this trench here, we have no fuzz here. But we also wanna just go up to our render again. And we wanna make sure that under the material here that we have tennis ball selected so that these little particles will be using the tennis ball color here, not the, um, the seam. So now we have a tennis ball. So let's go to our render settings. Let's change it to cycles. Let's go to the max samples here and let's change it to 55 under the render. And then we're gonna go into our front view. We're gonna go shift A and add in a camera. Um, let's just move it back like so. And then in the camera view by pressing zero on the number pad, you can see in your camera view, you're gonna just position it however you want. And if you wanted to, you can also select the, ten the tennis ball and just kind of position it differently, you know, make it look interesting. So I'm gonna go something like that. I'm gonna go ahead now and I'm gonna go Shift A, I'm gonna to go to my light options, add in an area light. And then in the front view, let's just move the area light to the right side. Let's go over here and give it a strength of 200, a size of 2.5 meters. And then in our top view, let's rotate it back a little bit. Shift D to duplicate, have another one coming from the front. And then shift D to duplicate and then have two at the back here for rim lighting, like so. And each one of these ones at the back, we'll just give them a strength of 270. So they're a little bit brighter, so 270. And then if we go into our camera view and we press Z and go rendered, we can see this is our tennis ball. So now we can also go shift A, add in under our mesh options, a plane, RX90 and hit enter. Let's scale this plane up and then scale it on the X to make it the same dimensions as the camera. And then just move it back in your world here. And if you need to, you could just scale it up by pressing S so it fills in the background. But that's just um, an optional thing. You don't have to add a background. So now let's select our tennis ball. Let's go to our materials here. Let's go to the tennis ball here and under the base color, let's just give it a tennis ball-y kind of green color. Nice and saturated. Let's select our background and go new and let's just go give that a dark value under the color, something like that. And the tennis ball hair is not thin enough. So we're just gonna go ahead and select the tennis ball under our particles. Let's just go ahead down to the hair shape. There we go. Let's make the diameter of the root 0.45. And now we've got something that's gonna look better. Also, we wanna go over to the children over here, and let's just make the render amount 200 over here on the bottom value. So that's gonna be our render. So now let's make sure to save, and let's click on render, and let's render the image. And here we have a very realistic tennis ball made in Blender 4.2. I really hope you guys have enjoyed this beginner's tutorial on making a tennis ball. If you have, definitely subscribe, give a like, and check out some of my other content. I will really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys next time for another Blender tutorial.